Good everyone, this is Damres Photography and today I'm going to be teaching you full body retouching, full body retouching. So I'm going to be going from retouching, from cleaning up the background to um, to skin clean up, frequent separation, uh, a bit of not too much, I'm not really going to do dodge and burn. I'm going to give you a simple tip on how you can dodge and burn your skin very very fast, you get, and then I'm going to go to color gradient, how I spot this image, my images. Seriously, I'm going to make this tutorial as fast as possible. So those that need that can be speed up, I will speed them up. You get. I'm trying to make it as short as possible, probably 30 minutes or so. I don't know. Let's see. Let's try. Okay. So I don't use really expensive geysers. I always tell my people if you want to buy my the gears I use for my retouching for shooting my images just check the link below if you want to drop a question for me if you want to ask me something you can drop a question for me on the comment section you can whatsapp me the link is below you get what i'm trying to say so i'm free you can just ask me something and then if i know it i'm going to answer you you get so we'll go right down to the tutorial please also don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share my people here yeah, don't forget to share okay so we're going right down to the tutorial as you can see my image is a smart object yes always make your image a smart object before you edit you get before you crop so right now i'm just going to crop i'm just going to make this image straight a bit here yeah, i'm going to make it straight that's okay and i'm going to just align her to the middle i think mm. yeah i like that around here something around here let's make sure that is straight yeah i'm using the background as an yes i think that's straight so i'm just going to move around here i think that's okay for me that's okay so i'm just going to increase this one to top a bit yeah that's okay good so i'm going to change the image size because the image size is around six thousand by four thousand four thousand by six thousand something around there so it's too big for me i'm posting these images to social media so normally you could leave them around two thousand or four thousand that's the height you can leave the height around four thousand for a portrait or two thousand me i just like my four thousand so that my image will not be more than two mb for m3 mb highest max you get for the total uh, size of the image after i've saved it you get so next thing i'm just going like i said i've cropped this image i've changed the image size so i'm going to flatten my image now and i'm going to click on ctrl j like I said, I use the brush tool for my selections using the um, editing quick marks tool. If I use the, if you want to do selections, you could use lasso tool, you could use quick select tool. But I use the editing quick marks tool so that I could use my brush to make selections, and that is usually faster for me. For me, that's faster because I use the graphics tablet to edit. So for me, that's okay. That's the best um, sort that I use. If you have any other form of image selection you can do you can do that so what i'll do first is click on select subject and allow it, uh, photoshop to select the uh, what they call it, the subject from the background you get so after photoshop has done that and i'll continue with editing quick marks tool the reason why is if you can zoom in you can see that the selections are not up to you get there are some places that have not been selected that needs to be selected so when you click on the editing quick marks tool and you click on your brush tool now you can just select those that have not been selected brush is to add to the selection white is to clean up that part let's say this place has not been selected and i want to add it make sure my brush is on black and then i'll just add those parts that have not been selected it is easier to use your brush to do selections if you're using a graphics tablet if you're not using a graphics tablet I advise you to get one it makes your work easier i have a link below there too that will show you where you can get uh, what they call the kind of graphics tablet I'm using. If you don't want something expensive, I'm using a Gammon graphics tablet and it's not really expensive. So I'm going to speed up this and then we'll be back immediately. I'm true with the selection of once I'm true with completing my selection. I'll just speed this up, don't worry. So as you can see this is our image we've made
made the selections correctly so what we just have to do is click on ctrl j click on ctrl j one thing again i like doing is putting a solid color adding a solid color first i add a solid color put it around red and make sure that i'm not seeing any white or if i pick places where i didn't paint well but for this image i painted them pretty well so you see so i have that it's okay i just off that first i go to the layer below that i click on i first click on control on the top layer i, I hold control and then click on the top layer as you can see i make that selection again then i click on select inverse i right click and click on select inverse on that layer on this second to the last layer that is layer after the control uh, after the background layer i click on ctrl j as you can see now i've made the selection of just the background if i off everything you can see this is selection of just the background so this is where we're going to work on cleaning up the background and then what they call it and making it seamless you get removing everything that doesn't need to be added to it so i'm just going to click on ctrl j on that particular background i pick my uh my rectangular marquee too i make sure it's on add so that i can add other selections to it and do everything at once so first of all i'm going to pick this part that's here i'm also going to pick from here downwards more still need more around here yes and i need more around here this is here okay so i need around here too need around here need around here too so what i'm going to do you see i'm picking way too much and sometimes i'm not picking enough so what i'm going to do i'm using the lasso tool now also add and add this part to it going to add this part because i don't like the circle like add this part add this part don't like what i'm seeing around there i'm going to remove this part here because no needed i'm going to remove around here too also going to remove around here yes around there I also think we don't we uh -huh, around here it needed to be added. So that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click on I'm going to right click on it and go to content aware field. I click on content aware field and allow Photoshop to fill up those parts that uh what they call it that are missing it to fill up using using the parts I want in my images. It's going to fill up using this other part. It fill up here using this part. This is green part you're seeing is what is going to use to fill it up if you have something you don't want to use it to you want it to use to fill up let's say there's something in the background but you don't want it to be added to other parts of the image you can click on this and then erase that part you get you can click on it and erase that part but for me everything is okay so i'm just allowing, going to allow it to fill it up it's not seamless it's not clean but at least the whole thing is filled up with white now so now i can go and clean up my background so once it's finished loading i just need to click on ok and let it okay so we have our image there we have our image as you can see this is a clean background so i can just deselect it you see we had before after before after so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clip this particular one to the layer below it and then i'm going to match them together by using match clipping marks then before I match this to the beneath one, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just go to filter, I'm going to blow, go to Gaussian blow, I'll blow out the background a bit. I'm just going to use a, um, a texture of 20. I don't want to lose all the shadows too much, you get. I don't want it to lose all the shadows, but I still want it to be a bit clean, you get. We're having a lot of things we don't want on it. So I click on OK there. Next thing is I'm going to use, I'm going to clip this one to the layer beneath it too and then match it the same way, match clipping marks. So for this my solid color, I'm going to double click on it while that layer is off and then I'm going to click on the mid, mid tone of all these colors. This background colors, I'm going to click on the mid tone which is around here and then I'm going to click on OK and then I'm going to click on open that stuff. You see now I've changed the background using a solid color but the thing is I don't want to remove all the details beneath it like the shadows i don't want the all the details on the original uh, background to be removed like the shadows i really don't want it to be removed totally so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to 60 around 60 
I think that's okay. Let me see if my shadows are still there a bit before after before after as you can see my shadows are still there not that much but they are still there so i can decide to take it to like 50 yes okay i'm going to leave it at 50 so as you can see now we're having a clean background but still we're having all those shadows that are still there it's not just as dominant as before again and our background is all already clean so i can click this to layer beneath it too i create the clipping marks and then i'll match that with the one match clipping marks as you can see so next thing for my image like i said i'm not using that big of gears so what i like to do is i like to sh give this image a bit of clarity first that's one of the things i do to make my image sharper so what i'm going to do is that first of all i'm going to clean the image first using uh, what they call it uh, the healing brush tool i'm going to clean up those things i see on the image i don't want you get i'm just going to go fastly and then clean up for this image i'm not really having a lot of things i want to clean up I don't really have anything now to clean up here. You get uh, this part. Okay, so that's good for the image. Next thing I'm going to click on Ctrl J for that layer. Then I'll go to my filter, I'll go to camera raw. When I go to camera raw, I'll increase. I'll increase it. As you can see, I'm working on the subject layer only. So this thing I'm applying is applying on just the image. I'm going to apply um, clarity to it. I'm going to give it a clarity of 20. So as you can see, I'm applying this clarity on just the image. I'm just trying to sharpen the image a bit. And be careful with clarity. The more clarity you add, the more darker the image becomes. You get so I'm just going to add my D20 is enough for me. And then I click on OK. And I'll click it to the layer beneath it. Clip it. And then I'll match those that clip together. As you can see. Now I can put both into one folder and name that my background layer. <clears throat> so I'll name that BG, which means background folder. So everything on this folder, I use it to work on the background. Next, but not next thing, I'm going to create a, a clone. A, I mean, a stamp, uh, a stamp layer. What a stamp means is I'm merging everything I've worked into one layer, but I'm not deleting the layer beneath it. And to create a stamp layer, what you have to do is click on. Control Alt Shift. Oh, I made a mistake. We oh, yeah, Control Alt Shift E. You've made a stamp layer. Control Alt Shift E. So now I'm going to click on Control J. What I'm going to do now? I want to do um, frequency separation. So I have those two layers. I put both of them into one folder and name that FS, which is frequency separation. I open that layer. I name the top one high, and then I name the top lower one low. And I off that. I zoom into my image. I go to filter. I go to blur. I go to Gaussian blur. Make sure one thing you have to notice is that when you're applying the radius for your Gaussian blur, when you want to do the frequency separation, make sure you don't apply a lot of radius. You want to try to blur out the texture of the image or the um. The, 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 the texture on the image but you don't want to blow it out too much you get so first of all what I'm going to click on is one my image is not that sharp normally and you can see for me I feel this is already too much you get it's not that much but you get so uh, for me I'll just leave it at one if I leave, take it to two two is way too much way too much so I'm going to leave it at one I could go lower at two but then again let me just leave it at one okay so now we have that so I'll go to the high layer, I'll on that, I'll go to image, I'll go to apply image. What I'm going to do is now is that I'll change my layer to low, change my blend mode to subtract. Just make sure my blend mode is at subtract. And then you make sure your opacity at 100, your scale is at 2, and your offset is at 1 to 8. And then click on OK. You change the, or what they call it, uh, you change the uh, blend mode here to linear light. Another thing you can do again that will make applying frequency separation easier for you is make another um uh, what they call it. Uh, this you make an aid layer. This aid layer is uh, what they call you are making your image black and white and then uh, what they call it enhancing the highlights and shadows so that you see where it's um bright and where it's shadowy. The thing about frequency separation for me is that what I am using frequency separation to do is I'm blending. The uh, what they call the uh, the uh, what they call 
the, the points between shadows and brightness i'm trying to make them seamless you know the point between the shadows and brightness around here now you see the shadows and brightness they are way different so i'm trying to uh, what i use frequency pressure is to block to, to blend in those parts you get what i'm saying so with the eighth layer you'll be able to see where your shadows are and where your brightness are so first thing i'll do is i'll click on black and white i'll make i'll open uh, i'll create a black and white adjustment layer make it black and white then i'll also create a curves on that curves layer i'll have two points one up one down one up one down and then i'm going to make this take this high as you can see i've enhanced the brightness of this image and i'm going to take one down this is just to show you where the shadows are in the image you get another thing you can do is you can go to your um black and white layer and then you can just play with that go back let's see the yellows you see you're just trying to see the ones that will help you out and then we'll just leave it like that for this image we don't really have much so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put that into one folder you can see before after before after so what you're going to do now is you go back to your frequency separation layer and then you go to your mixer brush tool for me i'm using the wet at 15 load at 30 mix at 30 flow at 30 you could increase your mix to 25 depending on image you're working with but for me i prefer at 15 it's okay for this image so i'm just going to then i'm also going to click on control and make a selection of my image before i start my frequency before i start the move and what they call using the mixer brush tool on my for my frequency separation the reason why i do that is so that my brush won't go out of the image it's just a precaution precaution you don't need to do that that's just what i like doing so like i said i'm bringing in the light from the shadows i'm bringing in the light into the shadows so from light to shadows my brush stroke is usually from light to shadows you get from light to shadows from light to shadows we just speed that up and would you get just follow my brush stroke also try not to try not to spoil the contour of your face while you're doing frequency separation if you're too harsh with it you can you tend to spoil the contour of the face so that's one other thing you have to keep in mind try to keep the contour except if you're going for changing the contour let's say the um the contouring of the image is not the way you want ah uh, want your subject then you could go for using frequency separation to also contour the image you could also use dodge and burn to do that but i have to create a separate tutorial for dodge and burn for this image i'm not using dodge and burn uh if i make a close up a close up if i have a close up image i want to edit and i want to add dodge and burn i'll do and uh, what they call i'll do a tutorial for that so you see how to apply dodge and burn but this is a full image i really don't want to add dodge and burn on it because it's not really needed what i'm going to do is a fast sort of dodge and burn as you can see i've tried to i've blend i've blend the um, lights and shadows and as you can see by all that before after before after you see the difference there so next thing we're just going to go through for the hands and the legs the same thing we did before we just going to i don't need to use this um what they call this layer again i think i know where my shadows and my lights are get One thing you could also use frequency separation to do is to clean up the clothes. As you can see, these clothes now they are bare off. So what I could use frequency separation now is just go over it. But make sure you're also just moving through lights and shadows too. You can just use it to smoothen the clothes a bit. As you can see, just using it to move through the clothes, going through lights and shadows too. You get so I don't take in those colors differently you get you won't want 
the color is not looking not like you won't want the colors not to rhyme you get so you just try to move from light to shadows you get so let's go around here seeing some things there so we have before after before after last but not the least i'm going to just walk on the face I'm going to work on the face and use lasso tool for that and for this normally i use the gaussian normally i increase when i apply gaussian blow on with using lasso tool what i do is i increase normally i multiply my radius the radius i used previously normally i multiply by two and by three or these days i multiply by two or even leave it at one sometimes the reason why is i don't want to apply too much i don't want it to be too intense you get i don't want the skin to be too dully to look like a doll too much so i could depend on the image i could decide to leave it at one the reason why i do that the reason why i do that is uh, what they call it so that um, the image could still see more seamless smoothing it a bit more but without affecting the texture too much you get so for this one i'm leaving it at one okay even at one i'll go through the image like i said i'm just going to do this for the face just the face And for the nose and lips, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me add that first, and then that the Gaussian blow for the nose and the lips, because I don't want to reduce the highlights. That is the highlights on the lips and nose too much. I'm going to just divide it by two, so I'm applying it but not applying it too much. I'm going to do the same thing to the lips. okay that's all that's all with frequency separation that's all for frequency separation so like i told you before i'm not going to do the normal dodge and bone using the curves layer and all that i'm going to do something faster something you could use let's say you have a client you want to work and you want to do it fast but you don't want to waste your time you get so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on control and make a selection this is where my image selection is. I can just click on control and come. I can come here anytime and click on it to make a selection of the subject or click on this one to make a selection of the background, depending on what I want to do. Now I want a selection of the subject and then I click on my adjustment layer and click on curves. I click on curves. Now I can delete this particular one here. So I click on curves and then I'm just going to take it up a bit first. This is not the end. As you can see, this is applied on just the subject itself. I can double click on this now. Now this is where the work is. I will take this particular one to the side here. Yeah? Just take it depending on you. Just play with it. I leave it around this side. I click on hold and move this. See now that has divided. And I cannot take this to around this side. Okay. You can see now if I increase this, depending on how I do it, um, I'm applying sort of dodge and bond on my image yes it's not the middle of the bone but at least it gives your image definition definition before after before after you see now so that's what i do sort of a quick sort of technique for me to apply dodge and bone last but not the least i'm going to brighten up the eyes which is not really needed yet but then again i'll just do it to show you i have the link also check my description you also see a link for you to be able to download this my eye whitening action so you can just download it and use it okay so i just open that i'll change the feel for the last one for this photo filter here i'll click on it and change the feel to 70 percent the reason why is i don't the whitening is too much so i reduce it using feel 
if you prefer the uh, what they call the amount of light whitening it uses you could, you can decide not to reduce it you get but for me i'm reducing it because i feel it's too much you get so 70 is enough for me and you can see now i've given that image another thing i'll do which i forgot almost forgot is i want to give the eyes and the nose a bit of detail and to do that i'm going to use is i meant to do that using dodge and bone like but like i said i'm not really doing dodge and bone so what another thing i could do is i'll go to layer i'll go to new i'll go to layer make the mode soft light and then change click on this one fill with soft light neutral and um, neutral color 50 percent gray and click on ok and i'll pick my brush i make sure i'm on flow of one percent and opacity of or more the color of 100 this is another way to dodge let me just show you an example if i click on this if i do this now when my brush is on white you can see i've brightened that part reduce it go back delete that if i change it to black and i do and i click on it like that what do you see i've darkened it you get so what you do is that that is another means for you to apply dodge and burn you get what i'm trying to say that's another means for you to apply dodge and burn so that's another means for you to apply dodge and burn so that's what we're going to do here so i'm just going to use to give detail to my eyes the brow you get i'm dodging here I'm dodging here yeah I'm just enhancing them to just make them more prominent you get make them more prominent do that for here too I'm going to do that for the tip of the nose I'm going to darken the tip of the nose you get and then i'm going to brighten the middle the middle of the nose okay so i'm also going to brighten the middle of the lips i'm going to darken the middle and the the, the lower part of the lips mm. also going to darken the middle so as you can see i'm also going to do that for this contour i'm going to enhance the contour around here i'm going to enhance that okay so as you can see before after before after like i told you you use dodge and bone to contour the face you can see what happened around here and see what happened around here before after so that's all for the skin retouching that's all for the skin retouching next what we're going to do is we're going to put them all into one folder and put them all into one folder into one group and name that skin so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make a stamp layer remember to make a stamp layer you have to click on ctrl or shift e and you make a stamp layer so now i'm going to go to filter i'm going to go to camera roll. this is where the color grading is done i do my color grading in camera roll faster easy simple and you could always save it and use it for other images right now i have a color grade that i've already seen but for this tutorial i'm going to just show you how i do that first of all i'll just go to calibration i'll put my my i'll bump up my saturation a bit i may i like even my saturation around seven just bump it up depending on you then you move this to the back this is not what you want move this to the front this is not what i want so i'm going to leave this around here you get so i like this color tone like this i like this color tone better so i'm going to do the same thing to the saturation for the greens then i'll move it here move it here okay this is what i want and i'll just bump it up a bit bump the hue a bit for the red i'm going to do that to make it three round there bump it here bump it here okay bump it here bump it here let's increase that so i can see the skin here here okay i like it around here okay so that's it before after before after what calibration does it makes the colors pop a bit you get i'm trying not to mess with it too much normally you could do a lot of messing with colors or cali color calibration and then to give you a lot so now i'm going to go to color grading so color grading first of all i'm going to work with the shadows i'll make sure if i move the more i move this um this place i'm manipulating the more i move it downwards or the more i move it into the colors i'm increasing the saturation so i make sure i don't move it too much i just leave it around here you see that dot, the little dots there i put my stuff around there and then i just move around 
and see the colors I want to get. Okay, so I think I'm going to work with around here. I like this color. So I'm going to go to the highlights to do the same thing. But for the highlights, I like to move, put my colors around the opposite of where the shadows are. You get. So for this one, I'm leaving the highlights. Let's see. Around here. This is quite good. And I'll go to the mid-tones. I'll do the same thing. Work with the mid-tones and see where you want it to be, depending on how you want your image to be. I think I want my image around this this tone, this tone of this field before, after, before, after. You see what we've done with color grading? Before, after, before, after. So now I'm feeling my colors don't have much red. So that the skin doesn't have much red. So what I can do is go back to my calibration and then take this one backwards a bit. Yes, as you can see now, I've brought in a bit of red into my skin. So I'll go back, go to curves. This is another thing I do for color grading. I just make three dots here. This thing just makes my color grading just a bit different. You get just gives it a bit of feel that I like about it. So I just move it. You could do it depending on you. You get if this is what you want. If this is what you want, you get what I'm trying to say. Depending on what you want, it's giving you just a bit of feel like that. I like what it does to my images. So give it just a bit. I'm going to move it downwards and see. Move it upwards. Okay, I'm going to just move it downwards. Just a bit. Move this upwards a bit. Oh, I like that. And then let me see about this one. Mm, let's leave it there. Okay. So this one, I think I'm going to take it down a bit. Okay. So I have before, after, for this is what the course has done. Let us check the, the whole thing. Before, after, before, after. Another thing you could do is to increase the sharpness of your image. You go to detail and just sharpen your image a bit. That's around 20, depending on you. So, this is all we've done before, after, before, after. So, what you can do now is just go to load, click on save, and then click on save, and then you save this color grade anywhere you want it to be saved, and then you can apply it anytime you are. Let's say you have other images from the same shoot images with this same background and all the same outfit and all you want to just you are editing them but you don't want to do the color grading all over again you can just go back and save them and you can save them for the first color grade and then load them later so for this image like i told you i already have a color preference for it that i've done before so what i'm going to do is also show you how i how i load that previous color grade i've done so i'm just going to close this change this one to the previous and then i'll go to load I go to this three dots, click on it, and go to load. And I go to where I saved my color grid, which is this. I just click on it and click on OK. As you can see, this is the previous color grid I did. It's not too different from what. That's to tell you I like my color preference. Huh? <laughs> so before, after, before, after. That's OK. So we have our colors. So last but next thing, I want to separate the image from the background. You could leave the whole thing like this and then just go to sharpening. Or brightness and contrast this could be the last thing for you and then you just go to brightness and contrast and then just brighten your image as much as you want and then you give it a bit of contrast depending on what you want for me this image is done so to be sincere with you like this image is okay like this you don't really need to do any other thing again you get but then again what I like to do apart from that again is I can I like I prefer I like to separate the image from the background and then but for this image, seriously, I'm just liking the way it is right now and then I'm not seeing a need to do anything. This is just looking classy. So I think this is all for this tutorial. This is all for the tutorial, seriously. Nothing more needs to be done to this image. If you like this tutorial, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, don't forget to share. Oh, I haven't showed you how to, <laughs> I haven't showed you how to export it. So you just go to file, go to export, go to export as, get... Just go to export as and then you can increase this is the quality depending on what you want decrease the quality to the highest make sure your resample is a by cubic sharper yes make sure your resample is a by cubic sharper make sure color space convert to RG, srgb is clicked embedded color control is clicked embedded color profile is clicked and then you can click on create and export and then you export it to where you want it to be stored yeah, export your image to where you want it to be stored and then you can just save that image click on save 
and that's all that's all you can see look at that image this is our image this is our image where and this is looking way really, a bit better than what i did before so guys you guys have taught me too you guys the tutorial has taught me so yeah if you enjoyed this tutorial if you like this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe please don't forget to share and have a wonderful day guys i'll see you in the next tutorial